Now as the assembly goes on, this is somewhat wobbly and you can see some of the rods are not tight, some are tight. That will cure itself when you pull this tight and you stretch, you stretch these out. And we'll be gluing all the joints with ACC when it's done. Now, <clears throat> what I've decided to do is not install this counter bar. And the counter bar goes in four center bays. And that is a bar that uh, it takes up the tension as the locomotive comes on and this bridge stretches and moves and it, it's, it's a counterbalance. The kit is very accurate. It takes these counters and has um, an eye uh, uh, on each end and you have to put it into the slot that we cut in the top and bottom of some of these and the pin goes through it. I found that sometimes these have a bow in it and you can't get the bow out even with some filing. So with respect to John and his kit and the authenticity of the kit, I decided to make a change. And what I've done is eliminated those plastic counter bars. What I've done is take a sixteenth inch piano wire, and you can use brass wire, and I just cut a piece the length from the center to the center pin, and I inserted the piano wire into the slot up here and into the slot at the top, and then I put a, a drop of ACC on the bottom, close to the column. The ACC runs down and bonds into the pin where it's touching. I turn it over and I do the same with the top. And now I have a very rigid piece of, uh, of, uh, of rod that it will not bend. And you can see from, you can see from the, the structure that after this has all been ACC'd in the joints, this doesn't, this has some flexibility this way, but it's, it's quite, it's quite rigid. and it's going to look quite quite good when it's all uh, assembled with the beams coming through here and then we'll have the diagonal rods in the center. So one of the liberties that I've taken to uh, just make this a little bit more um, rigid looking and uh, take out the flex out of some of the tie bars. To mill the slots for the ties. And what I've done is taken and I've ACC'd a strip of wood in the in the vise here so that I have one of these beams slightly above the top of the jaws. Now I'm using 8x10s so that I end up with an 8x8 on top of the ties. And what I'll do is I'll take a pair of these and I'll cut them in pairs so that they will match on each side of the the uh, ties so that the grooves are all equal and matching across and then what I'll do is I'll take this pair and I'll set it onto that stop which is my depth gauge and then I'll just tighten up the jaws so they're nice and snug and I've set this carriage to have three revolutions for each gap. And so I've got the first one set. I've set the gauge down so that this is just cut, going to cut slightly into the top of these, but not touch the top of the vice jaws.
we have to make the small U-shaped clips that go across from each side across the bottom that carries an I-beam. So this very nicely etched piece of shoe needs three holes and they are pre they are pre um, drilled with a laser but I drill these two out that will take some rods later and I drill this one out and just to make sure that it fits the 332 rods that are in the side cords again counterclockwise I just ream that hole just slightly just to make sure that it go the rod goes through there now we have to make that into a u-shape and this has been very nicely etched with a small groove on the back side which are for fold lines and then what I'll do now is I'll I'll take and put a shim in here because we want to fold that nice and square and in this case and I would use a piece of wood because it's too soft I've used my square file and I lay the file on just on the edge of that and then um, I'll take the square edge blade and I'll just lift up on the underside and I'll just fold it up and the same thing on the other side so I got a nice square fold on the edge and I just lift this up and fold it and voila we have a a nice u-shape fasting device that can now be installed that will carry the the i-beams I've cleaned all the surfaces where we're going to be doing uh, some uh, epoxy or crazy gluing with with additional pieces in and um, we want to we, we don't rely on the paint for a bond because the paint is only a, a surface between the two materials that are going to be bonded so I've pre-cleaned all these areas now these shoes that we just made will be going on the end of these rods here they go through tying these these um, eye bars together and they'll go on each one and that'll carry the beam that comes across connecting the two cords so what I've done is now that we've got this this made I just take and I put a, a small drop of ACC on the bottom of my needle and I just tap it on the bottom to seat it and then I'll lay that on there and I'll press that down with the blade the point of my blade and I'll, I'll eyeball that up so that it's nice and square and it's vertical so that is now nicely seated on that rod and the eye beams will go through there the kit comes with a styrene eye beam it's an eighth inch the kit says quarter inch but uh, it's just a typo it's actually uh, it actually is eighth inch and um, I don't particularly like the flexibility of this you know and I, will, I like to try to make as much rigid as possible so I'm replacing this with a piece of brass but the idea is that that will go that will go in in there and then I'll fold those tight up against the bottom flange of the beam and ACC that and that will be the bridge between the two cords the next step is putting brackets to carry the uh, tie, rod, tie rods that go across the top of the cords and all these shoes these go are in pairs I pre-drilled all these holes in here and now we have to cut them off and fold them on that little line right here so that you get a little angle PVs and then that's going to actually go and be mounted up here on the underside of this little groove the above that is where the joist goes and the joist is going to go in here like so up against that notch and underneath it 
is where those two brackets go and they're going to carry uh, tie rods back and forth the diagonal the diagonal bracing between the two cords that uh, stabilize it as I said before there's a lot of pieces and it takes a lot of time to cut them out and I just take a little bit of time every day and I do one or two operations and since there's a lot of these 20 of them on each of the, um, uh, the sheets of uh, etched brass so that's 20 times 4 so that's how many of these I have to cut out so I'm just going to do that as one set of operations then I'll fold them as another set so again I'm just using this flat edge blade on this cutting mat I find it uh, a little better than the, what was uh, proposed on the uh, instruction on glass and all I do is press the flat side against the the, the, the piece, the edge piece, and just push forward and I just sever those little those little tiny carriers and each one just push on, on an angle and they just shear right off because they are very thin since they've been etched and you can, you can feel it pop through so there's the one set and again I just take and I just part them off and then that piece has already got nothing on it take this one here and that's the nice thing about this cutting mat that is it will take the blade and, and the restored surface so each one and you can see it's tedious takes time to do it no sense in rushing just do it as as one operation there you go and that's another four ready to go